fighters. All right, let's talk about nuclear power plant meltdowns. Uh, I've been following that really, really closely. And any visual thinker would have uh, spotted the problem that, you know, why it melted down? Very simple. Okay, the uh, tsunami comes in, uh, the uh, earthquake comes, all the emergency systems are working, the generators went off, pumps are going, everything's cool, everything's nice. Tsunami comes in and drowns the generators. They're the emergency power, because of course all the power lines the plant are knocked out. So those emergency generators got knocked out. Now they had a backup, they had a pair of twins there so they could drown together. And they were on the first floor. <laughs> now, Sometimes things like this, they just don't see it. They just don't see it. You know, it's the sort of stuff I see, and I can imagine the water going in there and what's going to happen. Now I'm imagining all kinds of ways I can get an emergency generator in there. What are some really creative places I can get an emergency generator? How about carnivals? <laughs> you know, boy, they know how to wire it right up to the pump and salt and so I'll make the thing run. They might have the wires twisted together and violate all electrical codes and things like that. Now all that matters at that point is trying to get these pumps going. Well, I think it's a lot of information being withheld because I've noticed some weird things about the diagrams that they've published in all the magazines and newspapers. It shows GE's reactor thing. It shows the Japanese full length. And where are all the cooling pumps? There's no pumps. There's no plumbing in those pictures. Well, somebody didn't want to let the drawings out. That's what that means. Okay, here are the two types of mathematicians, the geometers and the algebraists. And I'm getting worried today that our educational system is not, you know, sort of doesn't value the visual thinking. But we need the visual thinkers to figure out mundane mechanical stuff. Okay, both at Three Mile Island and in Japan, valve stuff. At Three Mile Island, they pushed the thing on the control board and they thought that the, that the valve had done whatever it was supposed to do and hadn't done. Well, maybe someone needed to walk out there and look at that valve and see if it actually did it. Especially when it's one that's super critical. But you see, being a visual thinker, I put the emphasis on stuff I can directly observe. And I've also got the thinking is, maybe there's some things we shouldn't let a computer do. I get the heebie-jeebies when I read about a car that's going to have electronic steering, electronic brakes, go totally controlled by a computer, and then some computer scientists figured out how to hack into the, um, into the into a car. They wouldn't say what brand of car they hacked into, but they managed to hack into it without physically going into the car. Well, maybe we ought to have mechanical steering, some brakes that will work mechanically, and an off switch that disconnects the battery mechanically. Okay, everything else could be electronic computers, but maybe those things shouldn't be. I think we need to be thinking about those sorts of things. Maybe on some of those critical valves in that power plant when the battery power died, now that you can't even work the valves. Maybe you ought to have a great big handle like what you have on an airplane door. And you get a few guys on there and you can turn that valve. Because if they just sat there and not been used, they got stuck. That happened in two reactors. That's the kind of mechanical things that I understand. Okay, the atomic stuff, that's up to the pattern thing. That's their department. <laughs> All I know about this stuff is when those pumps start stop working, it gets hot and very dangerous very fast. So I gotta keep those pumps running. And I understand the pumps, and Bill Wills over here in our department, he's got those same kind of generators in his dairy, and he'd know how to fix them. <laughs> <laughs> now when you think in specific pictures, you tend to approach problems in a different way. I am a bottom-up thinker. In other words, I take specific information and put it into categories to form concepts. This is a picture a little young autistic man sent to me to show how he's sorting cats and dogs into different boxes. The normal mind is top down. Oh yeah, we got a great safety program. <laughs> yeah, except it didn't work. And I, I got on all these weird web pages. I, I looked at web pages for buying generators for, for atomic plants. Sometimes I can't sleep, so I look this stuff up. <laughs> web pages that were forums for people to operate the plants. And they talk about, and I found the regulations, the safety regulations. They have to have what's called trains of redundancy. You know, they make a train all right. They put all the all the generators in the same place where they can get wet. No, that's not exactly very good. Happen. You see, a dog will form different categories. When I'm on the leash, I protect my own. When I'm off the leash, I can play. You see, it's bottom up. You take information, put it in. Now, the thing about a bottom up thinker is he 
get better and better and better and better at your thinking if you get out and you look at all different kinds of stuff. Because I got like a Google inside my head. The more things I've gotten out and I've seen, then I can surf around in my head and build up images. 